Security. This is NATO Warship Foxtrot 105. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Flectish Channel. Modern day pirates may not have peg legs and parrots, but they are extremely dangerous. After years of decline, piracy incidents started to rise again, reaching 120 in 2023. What exactly are the world's navies doing about this? Because of the fall of Somalia's government, modern piracy has increased in the Gulf of Aden, providing a safe refuge for pirates preying on ships crossing the vital Suez Canal route. Attacks peaked from 2010 to 2012 and are starting to rise again. Piracy affects the economy by increasing shipping and insurance costs and disrupting trade. Threats to seafarers include assault, kidnapping, and extended hostage situations, all of which cause significant suffering. Although multinational naval patrols have reduced attacks, there's no clear solution. Root factors such as poverty and instability in Somalia must be addressed, but this is a complicated and long-term problem, making piracy a continuous menace. There has been no information in a, in a a collated report on the treatment of the seafarers when they are held hostage. And that is what we are trying to achieve with this report on the human cost of piracy. That does not mean the effort to combat piracy has been abandoned. Both the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Coast Guard's anti-piracy programs play crucial roles because of their unique strengths. The United States Navy serves as part of the backbone of global anti-piracy operations. So it says move down, it's moving down. They deploy ships to monitor high-risk zones, join multinational task formations, protect vulnerable vessels, and actively respond to attacks. In contrast, the United States Coast Guard concentrates on maritime law enforcement, boarding team expertise, and partner nation training. Coast Guard personnel collaborate with Navy warships and global counter-piracy task forces to share tactics and best practices. They also play an important role in capacity-building efforts to help countries tackle piracy in their own waters. This alliance combines the Navy's reach and might with the Coast Guard's expertise in law enforcement and marine security training. With the almost unlimited resources available to North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO countries, one such solution may be the United States Navy's Ohio-class submarine with a dry deck shelter, or DDS. Since the Ohio-class is one of the quietest submarines in the world because of its nuclear generators, it offers a unique solution. Used mostly by special forces, the Ohio class can surface anywhere and launch Zodiacs, officially known as combat rubber raiding craft in the U.S. Navy, to intercept any type of vessel without the target realizing they're even there. CRRCs are fast and maneuverable boats that can carry up to 10 armed sailors to interdict almost any type of surface threat, including small pirate vessels. 
Other NATO submarines, such as the Walrus class in the Royal Netherlands Navy, play an important part in anti-piracy operations. During the Cold War, the Walrus class submarine was designed primarily to hunt down Russian submarines. This class of submarine is a diesel electric attack submarine. They feature an unusual X-tail configuration for maneuverability, making them well-suited for coastal and shallow water operations. Submarines like the Zelio, Dutch for sea lion, can operate for weeks underwater and are also very quiet vessels. Their stealth makes them ideal for intelligence gathering and surveillance of pirate activity. Because of their size, they are less expensive to operate and can surface and launch Zodiacs from their decks to apprehend pirates or other hostile elements. The good thing of this submarine is that she's able to uh, operate for uh, a long period, up to uh, six weeks uh, submerged, uh, out of area, uh, expeditionary. Uh, she's a very quiet submarine because she's uh, on electric propulsion. Submarines, such as the Walrus class, Ohio class, and even the Swedish Gotland class, designed by Sweden, are exceptionally quiet. This is thanks to a mix of tactical drills and clever design. These include reduced hydrodynamic drag and water flow noise by having smooth and streamlined holes. The submarine's acoustic signature is reduced by placing special rubber tiles on the hull, which absorbs sonar pulses. Platforms that absorb vibrations are used to mount engines and other loud machinery so that they do not reach the hull and cause sound waves to radiate into the sea. To further reduce the amount of noise generated internally, all non-essential machinery is turned off and the personnel are instructed to remain silent. Submarines are used together with surface warships. As the threat of Somalia coast piracy increased, NATO initiated Operation Allied Protector in 2009 to counter it. The Portuguese frigate, NPR Corte Real, commanding Standing NATO Maritime Group 1, or SNMG-1, was sent out for this crucial operation. The Corte Real assumed the role of a watchful guardian, scouring the vital commerce route known as the Gulf of Aden. The crew and state-of-the-art surveillance equipment kept a close check on the horizon for any strange or misidentified ships, which could indicate pirate activities. Its helicopters are two Super Lynx MK-95s, armed with, among others, general-purpose machine guns and 50 caliber Browning heavy machine guns. Together with its 20-millimeter Orlikon cannon, rockets and missiles, the Super Lynx helped secure this area by means of a show of force and by providing reconnaissance. Uneasy, decision-making procedures were the rule of the day on the Corteriel Bridge as potential hazards were examined. The drop-in pirate activity highlights the important role that the Corte Real and its crew played in Operation Allied Protector. Anti-piracy operations also involve various types of rescue operations. That is where units like the 82nd Expeditionary Rescue Squadron, or ERQS, and French Special Forces, like the Commando 
Parachutiste de Air number 10, or CPA 10, comes into play. Operation by these types of forces usually include some kind of air cover from a friendly air unit, such as Mirage 2000. Although the 82nd ERQS has no aircraft, these resources can be provided to them either by the U.S. or a partner nation like France, which has helicopters like the AS-532 Cougar. Typically, pararescue specialists, or PJs, are used to extract downed crews, but they are flexible. Since the 82nd ERQS is stationed at Djibouti at the entrance to the Red Sea, they are close enough to play an important part in operations aimed at anti-piracy. Cooperation between the 82nd ERQS and CPA-10 would be aimed at the rescue of seafarers being held hostage by the pirates. These types of operations require skill, quality training, and coordination to be successful. Of course, these forces require the best equipment for the best results. Surveillance and monitoring are important components of successful anti-piracy operations. High-tech equipment, such as the Teledyne FLIR M500, with its military-grade endurance, or 810E approved, enables long-range detection of suspicious vessels, even in poor light or bad weather. This modern equipment, together with radar systems and marine patrol planes, provides a comprehensive view of maritime activity. By monitoring large areas, authorities can detect possible threats, track pirate movements, and deploy resources to deter assaults or respond quickly to ongoing situations. This proactive technique dramatically increases the likelihood of apprehending pirates and securing critical maritime corridors. The M500 is FLIR's most advanced marine thermal camera, engineered for extreme long-range target detection. The M500 comes with all the capabilities of the M400, including optical zoom, HD visible camera, gyro stabilization, and LED spotlight. Unlike the M400, though, the M500 is fitted with a cooled thermal sensor with double the sensitivity of the M400. Apart from active means of detecting and avoiding pirates, many ships are resorting to other methods of preventing piracy. One method is to prevent pirates from boarding using makeshift or dedicated anti-piracy barriers. When it comes to preventing pirates from boarding commercial ships, systems like the ARX Moldings, ABAC system, are both strong and easy to install. It secures the ship's railing with plastic modular barriers, making it impossible for pirates to utilize any climbing gear, such as poles or ladders. For ships passing through dangerous regions, this long-lasting and lightweight solution provides an extra line of protection. Another innovative means of preventing pirates from boarding is by using water cannon systems. When fighting pirates, water cannons are vital since they are strong, yet non-lethal weapons that can defend ships from boarding attempts. Weapon systems like the Nemesis 5000, TACDEV, and Unifier anti-pirate water cannon are capable of unleashing tremendous water volumes and forces. Pirates are pushed off their ladders, their boats are soaked, and they are overpowered because of this physical hurdle. Modern anti-piracy efforts greatly benefit from water cannons because they provide ship crews with a safe and effective means of repelling attacks without using deadly force.
another means of preventing pirates from boarding, is with non-lethal traps, such as the P-Trap system. To defend ships against pirate attacks, the P-Trap anti-piracy system can be installed. It is a passive deterrent that does not use lethal force. Two robustly built booms extend from the sides of the vessel, and they each suspend mini P-trap lines just below the surface of the water. The P-trap lines will entangle the propellers of an assaulting boat if it gets too close, rendering the craft useless and discouraging the attack. The system's capacity to offer continuous protection without monitoring, along with its ease of use and low maintenance needs, make it very useful in combating piracy. Although piracy is a problem that inhibits trade and put the lives of seafarers at risk, it is a problem that can be solved. By means of active security intervention, the likelihood of piracy can be lessened. And if that does not work, ships have various means of protecting themselves from pirates, such as preventing them from even boarding. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.